Hello and welcome in everybody to this your final day of competitive smite action for this weekend. My name is Judas Priestley, joined today by Spooky Mars and Spooky. Today we are bringing everyone the Solar Scarabs versus the Niflheim Wargs. Another big EU SCC set is of course played just before the uh, recent bonus balance patch. So Spooky, what are you expecting to see from these teams today? Oh, typical EU stuff, you know, we're going to... Do some 10 minute fire giant dances. Mm -hmm. Wait to see if anyone makes the first move. Maybe we'll get to see some fire minions make another venture into the jungle today. Right? That was fun last time. Yeah. But no, if you're looking over the rosters of both these teams, these are two top end EUSCC teams. Like these are stacked rosters. And normally it's very easy to talk about the star power on one side. Now maybe they have a little bit of an advantage there. Both sides today are incredibly talented. Both of them have been putting up massive performances throughout their SC careers. The, these are not new players. These are all uh, talented and tenured players in this league so far. So I'm expecting a very contested match. I'd expect this to be very close. Expecting a close game. Let's see if we get a close draft from both sides. We do head in to pick some bands for this first game. We have the Niflheim Wargs on the order side. Solar Scarabs on the Chaos side. And the Solar Scarabs, of course, you know, people remember this team as a very... Uh, got a few members from the old Hex Mumbo from the previous season, which was uh, a bit of a fan favorite in the EU SEC. They, they struggled with a touch in Phase 1, but have sort of come together in uh, somewhat of a super group for this Solar Scarab roster, including with uh, E-Chrome in the ADC role, which uh, has been playing absolutely fantastically all year. So excited to see what they'll bring to us. But um, something we've seen pretty regularly against Deathwalker specifically, Spooky, is this Chunga ban uh, in the first in the first ban slot, but also Jean Kui being banned. Well, I can only presume to prevent the French Emperor from playing it in the jungle again. Um, when we have this sort of mishmash of standard bands, what are you expecting to be left open? Is it expecting that there's going to be a lot to choose from here? There is plenty to choose from. Notably, you know, you've got Pele still on the board. There's another one that was on my... The Chernobog. That's the one I was thinking about. That's still available as well. Oh, be the first pick, no surprise. If you're banning away the Athena, it's pretty easy to just pick up that Chernobog if he doesn't do it for you. I'm a little bit surprised this character decided to leave that open after the Athena ban. It's kind of a pretty big giveaway what you're looking to do here. But Sun Wukong is picked up for Deathwalker. You know, he's the best solo laner in, in the game right now. Yeah. But it's really just for his safety, his passivity. I don't like that on Deathwalker personally. I'm not going to say it's a bad pick. I just look at Deathwalker, and he's pulling out target bans on Chang'a. Like, this, this is what I like to get active. Rad Tosker does facilitate some of that early game aggression. Not surprised to see it coming from the jungle here. Easily one of the better junglers I in the arise. game. Mashed up with Pele. Both drafts are just looking pretty standard so far here. Yeah, standard. Of course, Hades, a very reasonable pick into Sun Wukong. Does about the same things that Sun Wukong does, but in the laning phase, Baba actually a little Yaga. bit better. Um, yeah. Stands up quite strongly, but Baba Yaga locked in, of course. The Witch is free to be played again in the competitive scene and has been played to great effect lately. One of the only mages we're actually seeing still remain in the mid lane. Uh, why do you think that might be? Well, because she can build defensive items and not have an issue... With survivability after that she can stack prophetic cloak very easily she can stack you know, book of talk if you want it karen's coin she doesn't have to put as much work into actually getting mage items online and non-mage items in the case of prophetic cloak she just has way more survivability than literally any other mage has great utility great team fight presence she's just very good and the other mages right now they aren't able to stack up what this Baba Yaga is bringing. Unless we want to see Hades go into the mid lane, which I don't, but hey, rock. we've seen Jean Kui juggle before, so who am I to judge? Uh, you never really know uh, what some of these teams might bring out, which it's almost surprising to see everything be quite so standard. Now, this is just the first game, and of course, we will have at least two games, so who knows what they might bring out in the next one, but 
Uh, seeing everything coming through for the Solar Scavenger, Rama is sort of on that B tier list of the uh, ADCs at the moment, but does everything you need, right? Is still relatively safe. CC Immune Ultimate, the Astral Barrage lets you get involved with a dive even from long distance. Not too surprised to see that. But Ares Susano to wind out the draft for the Niflheim Wargs. This looks to be a Pele in the mid lane, uh, Spooky, and that's uh, an odd pick that you're maybe not so disappointed in. Yeah, this is one we've been seeing come through a little bit more frequently. I will say we've seen some Susano mids as well, but more frequently True. is the Pele. She's just very good, like in general, right? She's got great clear with the Pyroclast. She's able to engage on the enemy mid laner. It's a Baba Yaga, so it's now a little bit more safety than your standard mate. mage. Ooh, still plenty of fighting opportunities there. Hate that. Don't like that one. Why do you hate do that have, one, Spooky? Do I have to talk about the Aphrodite? Talk, do I have tell to? us about it. Why Why do you hate Aphrodite? It's an Aphrodite, man. Like, could you be any more cringe? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean... we, we're seeing more mage supports these days, right? Aphrodite and Nox, even Iset, get to go into that support role these days. Some changes to how her healing actually works means you're not reliant on building power. You can actually build some defensive stats, but... Man, come on! It's not for Dighty! Look, works really well with all the picks. You know, you got extra safety on the Rama and the Wukong. Baba Yaga can just be extra dive prevented. Look, I, I, someone has to, all right? Someone has to. Do but we? you know what? Let's not leave it to me to give the credit. Let's let the players do the talking as we head on into game number one between the Niflheim Wards and the Solar Scarabs. Like we said, standard drafts across the board. We do have that Pele in the mid lane, and it will be the Susano in the jungle, pretty much as we would have wanted it. Emilito on this Aphrodite. Uh, if you don't want to talk about how good it is, then Spooky, let's talk about exactly what it is doing. Go for the War Banner to start off and looks to be building into a Gauntlet of Thieves. Is that how you would like to see this Aphrodite built? Dude, you're, you're like asking the impossible question. I would like to not see Aphrodite build anything because I don't want her <laughs> in the game, but all in all, it is interesting to see her go for the War Banner. It has become a more popular starter item for the supports. And if you're on a mage, you, you have some safety, you've got some range, you can be a little bit aggressive from a little bit further back, not put yourself out of position for that. But against Preds on this Ares might be a little bit risky. Like, this is a very high damage Wargs duo lane. Yeah. And Emilito doesn't have that much safety on, on this Aphrodite until you reach level five right at that point that's when you have your undying love that's when you have your get out of jail free card sure you do have the the knockback before that but this is an aries he's got knockback immunity you're not going to be self-healing with that so the back off isn't going to find as much value as you might hope once he lands those chains and starts with the searing flesh warriors have a lot of easy damage onto the solar scarabs duo lane and i'd expect to see this translate some aggression from Gunter, who is the mid laner for this game for the Wargs, by the way. It is not Hawk as it was on the Picks and Band screen. A little bit of a fill in there. This Pele and a Ratatoskin in the jungle. I'd expect some early rotations coming out and a lot of action on this left side. I've already seen the French Emperor make the first rotation to the shield buff just by virtue of uh, Ekrom and Emilito getting a ton of wave pressure. Early on, this leaves Rapio free to wander over into the right-hand side and Deathwalker forced on the tower, as you would expect, uh, while up against a Hades. But uh, I'm interested in this Ares pickup, actually, Spooky, because uh, while uh, cripples from the chains, of course, uh, always effective. You know, those shackles can really shut down anything you want to do. But it was picked quite late on in the draft, specifically into four CC immune ultimates already. Is, is it that Ares can provide more than just that no escape? It, it, it does seem to be a bit of a... I don't know. It's, it, it's a bit of a tough call. So first you get a bunch of lane pressure from this Ares. There's a lot of high damage in this lane. You're facilitating this Chernobog trying to get it online. But in addition to that, it may not look like it at first look, but the Warriors have a ton of beads burning on their draft, right? Panovich on Hades will get beads pulled out. Rapio, with his Typhoon, will force some beads out. Even Gunter on this Pele can pretty effectively force some beads just with the knockups. Oh, let's go. Hey, he's going. This is what he does, man. He <laughs> he's an Ares. He gets to go ahead and just kind of walk around wherever he wants. He's walking up the purple buff now because 
Why not? If you've got the damage, you're not offering any peel. Yo. Just here. Oh, he steals it with the chain, too. The shackles. Just shackling the XP away from the scarabs, apparently. Yeah. I mean, that was that was three camps invaded on the left-hand side, and possibly even this shield buff. All done by Preds. Preds, like, uh, you know, way higher up in the net worth than he should be. Actually ahead of his own jungler already. Uh, interestingly enough, actually ahead <laughs> of Rama as well. Ekrom... Uh, some are not really getting too much done, but Preds, you know, nice start. Level 5 first for I, I Davey, just by virtue of having a lot of extra solo farm and Preds picking up elsewhere. It's, uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm starting to believe, Spooky, I'm starting to believe in this Ares pick. Yeah, the more room Preds has to play on this Ares, the easier it's going to be for the Wargs. Right now, <laughs> you can see Fred Chipper is now checking his buffs and find they've oh, been no. taken away <laughs> by who? Who could have done such Sacre a thing? Bleu. Ares um. may have been missing for a couple minutes there. You know, we're not pointing <laughs> any fingers. But the, just the sheer fact he's able to strip away that farm and get the shield buff on top of it, he's the one that picks that up. Means he gets to play so much more aggressively over in this dual lane. And I expect to see some rotations maybe come over around this, this mid lane as well. Get him active across the map. See if they can push Gunter ahead. So if you can shackle zeros on this Baba Yaga... Well, what's she going to do? She can't Cauldron Hop now. Mm -hmm. And Gunter's immediately going to dive in. So you can very easily force an ult out of zeros. And once you do that, all you have to do is walk away. That's their safe down. You don't have to overcommit. Orgs can play this pretty by, by their own pace right now. Yeah, and of course we've seen the trend being in uh, EU SCC specifically is always more focused around these objectives. Now, now uh, hold on, Rapio already going in, takes a ton of damage from French Emperor, who oh! takes a ton of damage back. Rapio picking up that first blood before the through the cosmos can go off, and uh, well, that's exactly the start that the Wargs would have been looking for. Yeah, what was that about the objectives? Apparently, we were fighting over harpy camps right now. Which I, that's I guess an objective, you, could call you know, an objective. It is. Something on the map that you want to kill and it gives you golden XP. So it's a small objective. Oh! No! Preds! <laughs> Are you Preds kidding the me God. Right now? <laughs> a shackle does about 40 damage at the moment. It depends if Preds is leveling it. At best, it would be like 65. Yeah, okay. It's, 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 a, fair, it's a fair bit in there. Uh, oh, no way. Okay. All right, right. The, the, the man is mortal. Uh, Preds is not that unstoppable right now. But uh, what, what was the, it's, it's not about the, the farm and the stealing the buffs, just the mental damage that Preds is message. exuding right now. Uh, Preds is making it known that this is his map and everything on it does belong to him. And if you're trying to take a buff without his permission, then <laughs> you, you sure have made a mistake there. And he's going to come collect what he is owed now if you look for a mid lane gank here oh that's simple enough you know there's the home sweet home that's the safety you're talking about safety down now for zeros who uh you know oh, preds doing just helping everyone out and actually doing some bastion damage there for for zeros uh, but th that's what you're talking about get the safety down no beads of course because zeros not likely to use that but it does mean that this baba yaga can't play aggressively in this lane now I am surprised that Preds went straight for the no escape rather than looking to put some chains down first. Obviously, they're just looking to pull the ult. But, you know, you could throw some shackles out, see if they're willing to burn something before you ult. But Gunter was a little ways away, so probably didn't expect to have too much follow-up on those shackles. The Scarabs just have to be playing without a mid lane ult for a little bit. Once again, Preds. Just on these buffs, he's going to go ahead and secure that. No no contest, really, for the scares at this point, despite <laughs> French Emperor's presence. Yeah, they're really trying to make something happen over here, are the solo scares, but th there is literally nothing up uh, on their side of the map or the other side of the map. It's been too efficient in the jungle from the Niflheim walk so far. It's actually net them about, you know, a bit over 500 gold lead, a lot of that being uh, the first blood, of course, they did pick up onto the French Emperor. Uh, but it's given a lot of room for Rapio, actually, to just kind of farm up, do what you want on this Susano. And I don't know, are, are you too interested in getting uh, active early on Susano? Or are you happy to stack up this Soul Eater first? I mean, I wouldn't have bought the Soul Eater personally. That's that's an interesting one to me. But I'm also not a very good jungler. So I'm that not going to say that me not buying Soul Eater is the right call there. 
I do think if you are buying the Soul Eater, you want to get that fully stacked and online before you start looking for too many ganks. As you can see, it didn't take him long to get it online, right? It's eight minutes in. He's got that complete. Now we start looking to get aggressive. The problem with that is where does he go, right? Because over in this duo lane, you've got Egram and Emilito on Rom and Aphrodite. No way. No way. Oh, no, Rom. they don't get it. They Fred's don't Rom. steal this one away. <laughs> I can't believe Fred's has slacked off to this extent. <laughs> Just giving right. that one away, you know. Oh, Rapio's in. Rapio oh, gets the pull onto Ekrom, looped up. Ekrom on the roll away. There is so much damage coming out, and that is the kill onto Ekrom. This dual lane pressure paying off. Finally, the Scarabs get a purple buff, and, uh, well, Preds gets his revenge after all. Yeah, it turns out when Emilito leaves the lane, it becomes a lot less safe for Ekrom. <laughs> so, you see that Aphrodite Panvich. gone, Panvich. What are you doing here, buddy? Oh, there's this the beads burned already. Trying to run away. There is the uh, sp uh, Pillar of Agony. Actually gets him alive for just a moment. Deathwalker dives in deep, as does French Emperor. And the, uh, and the actual uh, decoy tanks the uh, tower from them. They're perfectly fantastic. Play for the Soul Scarabs, and that's them their first kill of the game. That was his jungle. <laughs> like, Panvich is on his side of the map. Just... Doing his own thing, he's just... Yeah, Preds isn't there. <laughs> it all comes down to Preds, man. <laughs> yeah, I love that from the Scarabs, though. They finally look to get aggressive. Nine minutes in. No, they need an answer, but here comes Preds. He's here now. Oh, there's the first chain. Somersault Cloud's still down, of course, and Rapio. And Preds fully aware of this. The Seeric Flesh comes through the bird form. Just about gets a bit of distance for Deathwalker, but not quite enough. Not enough for a blink. Rapio picking up another kill. That is a killing spree in the first 10 minutes for the Niflheim Wargs. And uh, Rapio's in Dreamland right now. Yeah, Wargs? You know, this does a nice little lead on the kill department. <laughs> Preds is again. stealing away the Harpy Camp now. Can't leave this guy alone on the map for anything, man. <laughs> it belongs to him right now. Know? It is on Rapio. He's three and zero. He's got a killing spree. He's the only one that actually has these kills. Now Preds does have two assists, so he's getting active. He's getting involved. But right now, this is a matter of the Scarabs just finding an opportunity to kill Rapio. If they do that, get the shutdown and take him off the board for a little bit. It pretty much negates everything the wargs have done so far. The lead is not extreme by any means. About a thousand in favor of the wargs right now. That's you get the shutdown, and that's basically just gone right there. Yep. Davy will push you forward, looking to take this tower down. Not gonna get it just yet. But keep an eye on that jungle. There's some rotation still happening. Uh, Rapio actually using the ultimate there just to secure a purple buff. So more pressure put onto E-Chrome. Uh, you know, this run really not having a good time, but the neither is zero. It goes into the home sweet home, but a ton of damage comes out from Gunter. That volcanic lightning will slam down that final shot. Emilito now, the new target, as Davy made the long rotation over. But this Aphrodite is tough to kill, even at the best of times. So, well, you know, it's it's a, a commitment there from Davy, which might get punished slightly if, uh, with E-Chrome picking up some farm. But again... Another kill goes the way of the walks. This time, not on Death the Walker? back of Rapio. Deathwalker flying through some danger, dodging out the chains, gets up into the somersault cloud. Should be safe, but French Emperor is here too. Uh, he's here, but he's going oh. straight back down onto the camp. Emilito pulled in. Pulled in, chained up, as is Deathwalker. Oh. Preds now goes for the no escape. Do they get anyone? No, it's just the two, so the Undying Love shall counter that out. But so much pressure coming out from the Wargs, the Scarabs don't have any spot safe to stand in. They don't have anywhere that's particular... <sighs> Away from Preds. That's that's their safe spot exactly. to yeah, stand that's true. in. <laughs> if Preds is on one side of the map, you can be literally anywhere else, and you're probably okay. Deathwalker actually has... A very slight XP lead right now, despite his fall. He did pick up a kill for himself as well. Now, Preds, all on his own around the Stygian Beacon. But paying for oh, his brushes. The damage is there, and Emilito gets that final shot. Gunter, no mana to work with, means that the Scarabs pick off the primary target of the Ares. Rapio going all the way behind, but doesn't get the jet stream. Now going for the Cyclo. Oh, does not connect Ooh. with that either. Nothing doing. For Rapio on that rotation, it will be a kill and a beacon for the Solar Scarab. That, that's what they need to get the ball rolling in this game. Yeah. A little unlucky they were only able to kill Preds, but 
Prez have been stepping forward so much. At some point, you have to be able to punish it. And I love the collapse from the Scarabs there. If he's going to put himself out there and just buy himself on an objective, you got to make a play there. you got to punish that. Yep. Scarabs are very aware of that. Do so. And even pulls an ultimate from Rapio as well as he tries to chase French Emperor through that jungle. Finds zero value. And then now creates a slight window for the Scarabs to maybe be a little bit more aggressive. Rapio is the big leader on the wargs right now. If you can find him without his most powerful tool, it would be big for the Scarabs. Now 13 and a half minutes in. Play has been around this left side. Focus has been on keeping Ekrome down. Wouldn't be too surprised if we start looking at this gold fury here in a little bit. I say sooner rather than later. Pyromancer is also coming up just about a minute or so here. So there is counterplay on the other side of the map as well. Ekrome beads come out. Just on a little trade with Davy. And if that's not a signal for Preds to get over there, I don't know what is. Oh, the other single might be this one. Oh, Pred's actually not connecting with the no escape there. Okay. Just doing the, the, the sad that Larry's <laughs> animation of no <laughs> chains whatsoever. But I am surprised the Nephilim Walks haven't pulled this Gold Fury earlier. Actually, they've been in a position maybe to fight before now. And Emilito, in the full brunt of that, I think that was an undying love used right there. So now... Gold Fury does get pulled by the Niflheim Wargs. It's actually just Davy. Hey, uh, Gunter and Rapio got some more farm to do first. Uh, Davy's actually taking no damage here. Has already got the Devourer's Gauntlet's fully stacked. And the Atalanta's bow. So uh, Davy on this Chernobog, not looking to build for the late game. Actually building for the right here and now. I love that. I mean, Chernobog is going to scale regardless, right? He's going to be extremely effective just on account of how his kit works. The steroid gets... It's like what 60 percent attack speed the ultimate is crazy in late game fights these are not bad items if you can keep yourself sustained through these fights you can start taking down these objectives and shredding them like they're doing over here without <laughs> davy's help this is two free objectives now to the wargs this is how you push a lead this is how you cement yourselves start getting things ahead the kills are nice but they don't add gold up quite like these two objectives have done it's just going to facilitate Davy scaling all the better here. Yeah, uh, one thing I've just noticed from uh, the Niflheim Wargs, which is something relatively unique, uh, we often talk about these recipes as these players start cooking up, uh, but the Wargs aren't lot interested in cooking. They're actually mixing, because we have three party punch on the side of the Niflheim Wargs. This is before the uh, slight nerf to Bountiful Bow as well. What do you think it is about this composition specifically that has justified the triple party punch pickup? Cosmos comes out, but I think a big part of it is the double assassins. Hang on. Those gay finally finds two. No, nope. I'm dying nope. love. I'm dying love. That's the oh. thing. That's why we just love, you know, Aphrodite so very much. So... So fun and interactive there. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you've got these two assassins who very mobile, have to close the distance to get in on people. They want to roam around the map. Party Punch is very effective on these assassins. It just facilitates them extremely well. Davy. Oh my god! Ow. Those those are the shots. That's what we were talking about building for the here and now. The Analanders bow and the executioner. Gutta goes oh. behind and whoa, deletes Ekrom just punch. like that. Yeah, party punch, I guess. <laughs> you know, it definitely contributes to that. <laughs> Preds in some danger this time in the mid lane and shall fall down. And which is lurking around as well. There's a huge push on this left hand side though. Tier two tower already down before 17 minutes. Yeah, that's Chernobog for you. You put three, four people over there, that tower's going to fall real quick. Even if, you know, Rapio is stepping up to body block Gunter into the tower for an extra shot. Sometimes that happens. <laughs> French Emperor. Oh, my goodness. God, Lord, it's just destruction from the wards right now. They've got themselves a significant lead. And it's not just in the gold department. They've got some really impressive levels over the Scarabs, which I think is possibly even more relevant. I mean, look at the ADCs right now. Davy is was three levels up on ekrom he is four levels up on french emperor wow. and that is part of why french emperor looks for that gank immediately takes half his health bar and cannot commit to anything davy is just way too far ahead right now scarabs are gonna have to find an answer for it. i talked a little bit about rapio being a problem point on the wargs 
But Davy right now is just swinging for so much damage. Uh, it, it's tough to lock down a Chernobog anyway. And when you have a composition like the Solar Scarabs do, where it's very inconsistent CC, you know, the, the, the kiss coming out from Emilito is not the easiest thing to hit, especially on a nimble target like the Chernobog. But also, for example, French Emperor there goes for the Acorn Blast and did not get the stun. And that was it. That was it for the gank. There is no more you can do that will benefit you there. Even Deathwalker on the Sun Wukong, like, you know, it's it's not easy to get that Tiger Form stun. And now Echrome feeling the brunt of the force from Rapio and Preds. Missed timing on the uh, the ultimate there. And actually, oh Echrome somehow God. gets away all the way through all of this. Emilita with great peel, but Gunter says no. And shall <laughs> shut them down. Panvich with a perfectly placed Pillar of Agony will shut down any more retreating from the Solar Scarabs. It's a mid-tower as well. Two players barrel to the pi uh, Primal Fury. In fact, just to back to base. But another fight goes awry for the Solar Scarabs. You know how tilting that is to put so much work into surviving, getting out of all the danger, laughing as they mistime their typhoon and hit your Aegis, using the oh. undying love. Oh, no shot. No way. Yeah, you get out of there, French Emperor. I don't <laughs> think so. They're going to go right back on it here. A dive yeah. from the wargs is just so effective. Like, you can try to run. There's no getting away from these wargs. They are on the hunt. They're picking up everything in their path. I'm going to pick up maybe another Pyromancer as well here. Primal Fear goes down. Pyromancer is going to go the way of wargs. There's way too much zoning here for the Scarabs to step forward on this. Gunter's just going to finish that one up by himself. Orcs have given themselves a very solid lead. At this point, with both minor objectives being down, only one tier one left on the map for the Scarabs. Orgs really just have the the fire giant left to look towards. Dave's already level twenty. That thing's gonna shred it once he gets over there. Yeah, the yeah, one saving grace for the scarabs, I think. Uh, with these fire giant fights is because they have taken uh, a mage for zeros on this Baba Yaga. You have uh, the highest instant burst damage in the game. Uh, it, it's still not great secure, though. You know, you're almost relying on getting a good potion or a particularly good shape. Uh, it, it's not going to be the easiest <laughs> contest, but at least uh, they, they, they have something to work with. Uh, what's, what's caught your eye there, Spooky? What, what, what are you, what are you I giggling I just love at? the fact that you're hoping for a particularly good shape. I mean, you are, right? Secure. You are. You're not like, wrong. <laughs> like, you know, it, it, you are relying on some RNG to get it's you like, back God, into I it. I hope it's not the oval this time. <laughs> that would really mess up my secure. Look, if you get that Y shape, that secure is like it basically the Solar Scarabs, right? But if it's not a Y shape, then then there might be some trouble. Uh, it might why? be some trouble for Deathwalker because uh, Raphael dashing forward. Fajan already been started up by Davy, who, who isn't Still dealing there. particularly high damage to it. No crit, of course, in the build for the Chernobog just yet. And yeah, they will drop it for now. Uh, but there's a warning sign for the Solar Scarabs. If you're doing anything other than defending the Fire Giant, the Wargs are going to take it from you. And, uh, Davy's actually the one starting the Fire Giant on these. He just steps forward and takes the aggro. Though he's doing less damage to it. Once someone else is the one pulling that aggro... This will be a lot easier to Davey! Oh, look at Preds! Preds. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? I mean, Preds again oh, gets the go. undying love. Now dashing forward is Davey Where's with that living team? nightmare. It's only two versus the three members of the Solar Scarabs here, but they've managed to burn the home sweet home. Zeros has taken about half their HP. Deathwalker lurking around the backside. Will it be aggressed on instead? Gets the bird form out. So already deflecting. Many of the Solar Scarabs have the Niflheim Wargs. This time, Preds does take the aggro. Damage increases. The Solar Scarabs coming back in. Panvich with a good silence. On to Emilito. Deathwalker uh -oh. stepped up highest. Well, now gets up into the Somersault Cloud and still stays alive. But the health bar's dwindling for the Niflheim Wargs. Still unfazed, though. Yeah, Wargs can play this game really all day. Look at the amount of lifesteal they have. It's on every single character. They're going to go right back to Fire Giant. Start oh. healing back up. Man, firm that fire giant for themselves and Pam. She's actually going in. Okay, I was a little concerned there for a second. Now, fire giant around all five. The wargs are feeling great on this one. The amount of damage they can output just forced every single member of the scarabs away from that fire giant. There was no chance for them to even try to contest. And mind you, 
it was two people. It was Prez and Davy who dove into like three of the scarabs. And there's just enough damage between those two to create a no play zone for the scarabs. Three ults were burned from the wargs, only two from the scarabs. And that still was not enough to give the scarabs an advantage in a fire giant fight. With the wargs actively starting that objective, taking damage from it, the scarabs cannot compete in the damage department. They have to find a way to slow this game down and get everyone online. Because right now, the damage items have a massive disparity. The tank items have a massive disparity. Emilito is not enough to keep the scarabs alive through these fights. He can CC one person. He can keep two people alive if he plays it really well with the Undying Love. Hard to pull off to get the kiss swap mid Undying Love is possible. I just don't know if it's enough to stop the oppression that is the wargs right now. Uh, it, it, it's always going to be a touch too much to fight outside of the base right now. We are in a, in a situation where all we can talk about for the Solar Scarabs is what does their Phoenix defense look like? Because it, on the map, it, it's not working. Uh, Gunner actually uh, getting all the way out there with the Volcanic Lightning. I'm not sure why they were so intimidating, but maybe not aware of where the French Emperor was. Uh, but how does it look uh, for the Solar Scarabs now with a Titan coming down mid lane as well? Do they have any chance in this Phoenix defense? It's pretty tough to defend the Phoenix with the Titan in this lane now. Really, Zeros is your best Phoenix defense. He's got the biggest AoE. Once the home sweet home goes down, though, Solar Scarabs don't have a ton of area oh, damage. Preds. Preds is already in the back. Preds all the way to the back gets three, but will burn the Undying Love and the home sweet home. It's only that so far. It looks like the Solar Scarabs content to defend at the Tier 2 Tower. There's a stun out from French Emperor. Has made the rotation back after split pushing for a bit of farm. Gunter... Poking forward, Preds charging forward. The Titan about half HP, but this tier 2 tower has already fallen. In goes Rapio, Rapio gets a pluck onto Emilito. Deathwalker now in the Pillar of Agony as well. Retreating still are the Solar Scarabs. The health bars are not great, but still alive. French Emperor up into the Through the Cosmos. Will the Solar Scarabs re-engage? Likely not, because the Wargs back away. That is a Phoenix still kept alive, though. And that is a big win for the Solar Scarabs. It couldn't have gone much better than that. Really good from the Scarabs there. Choosing to defend around that Tier 2 was integral. Not to try to keep the Tier 2 alive. It was just so they had a second or a sixth, really, source of damage there. So they could put some damage into that Titan before it reached their Phoenix line. That was the crucial part of stopping that Phoenix push. Now damage onto the Wargs is good as well. But they have Fire Giant. They've got Lifesteal. They've got Preds increasing their HP 5. They're not too concerned about their health bars if that titan was healthier the wargs would have walked in with it scarabs are able to buy just enough time to keep these lines of firebirds still up and complete they do end up losing their last tier two tower but you really weren't counting on that being alive anyway at this point in the game scarabs have their back to the wall but they have another chance here ultimates come back up Zeros will be able to use the home sweet home for Phoenix defense this time, rather than just to try to keep himself alive. Well, Price is still allowed to kind of just walk where he pleases and blink in for multi-man no escapes. You may find that things look a little bit more dangerous than you might otherwise be expecting. That was a great flank there from Preds, looped all the way around. Actually, possibly could have got a better no escape if they didn't blink. Uh, they were in the middle of absolutely everyone. <laughs> got the, the key target, though, there is, is zeros with that home sweet home, because that home sweet home makes such a difference in the team fights. It's, it's a long uh, no play zone, basically, that the Solar Scarabs have to work with. Uh, other than that, the no play zone is fully in control of the Niflheim walks. Uh, but for, the, for that yeah, few for seconds. Team. Yeah, for the, that's the whole team. For those few seconds, Zeros can actually put up decent damage and is actually second currently in the player damage charts. This Fire Giant's up. I'm surprised that the Solar Scab's looking to defend it. Blink comes in from Preds, not straight with that no escape. Now gets three members. Preds taking a lot of damage at the start of this fight. Throws off 
uh, Dianc as well, Damage. and Deathwalker in the sky, as is French Emperor jumping down the back line, but Panvich is in the front line, and then instead Sirius gets chased away. E-Chrome shall finally fall. Now Emilito exposed, no one to link to. She'll fall in the backside as well. Rapio. Taking down the Baba Yaga. There is nothing left in the way of damage right now for the Solar Scars. French Emperor with the smallest amount of HP just tries to live a little bit longer. Rapio says no. Rapio is unstoppable. And the Liffelheim Wargs barrel down to take game one. Yeah, this Phoenix stands no chance. Deathwalker has to put up a miracle defense. 1v5 is hard to do. Davey's just going to ignore him. Davey and walk doesn't on care. In. Preds is just taking the brawl, walking up. <laughs> One shall fall, but it's just Rapio. Preds survives and, uh, yeah, amazingly manages to win that game pretty cleanly for the Niflheim Wards there. Excellent play at the end. Scarabs tried to put up a defense around an unenhanced fire giant, and that's ultimately what cost them the game there. They tried to yep. step forward aggressively, and they had really good damage, but if you notice how that fight started and how it ended were completely different looks. It started with the Scarabs grouped up, looking to put the damage into Preds, take him down, not let him play the game. And it ended with about four different members of the Solar Scarabs in four different places on the map. Yep. No synergy there whatsoever. Could not focus any fire. Got completely split up. And when you're that far behind, getting caught in a one-on-one -on -one is a death sentence. Uh, the, the play there from the Niflheim Walks was Divine and Conquer, and Conquer they indeed did. But that is it for game number one. It is as simple as that sometimes. It was uh, not the shortest of games, but it felt like it was relatively quick work from the Niflheim Walks. We'll have to see if it's a quick set, as they will win this game if they win the next game. But that will be it for game number one. We're going for a quick break. We'll catch you again for game number two.
All right, we are back from game number one, ready for game number two. Spooky was an exciting game, so I'm excited to get into picks and bans. Let's go right for it. We're going to head on into this second round of picks and bans. And the Neverland Walks came through with something really strong. They had a game plan. They played it well. The Solar Scarabs did not react accordingly. What do they need to change for the second game? How are you just going to tell me it was a really cool game? They're not going to say anything about it being a cool game. Like... That's messed up, Judas. That's crazy. Uh, no, look, look they... think of the past. It's all about what comes next. <laughs> get rid of the Chernobog or get rid of the Ares. Either one will do. They'll elect not done that. for neither. However, they are first pick this time. They can take one of those for themselves if they so choose. Ah. They actually are forcing the Chernobog ban over to the wards, which I really like. They already saw the wards ban the Athena. They know their first pick, so hey, if they're gonna do that, we might as well just force it ourselves. Let's leave up the Baba Yaga, which I'm not gonna say was a bad look for Zeros, mostly because I can't say it was really any look. The Wards really just kind of took control of the game from minute one. Yep. Oh, I love that. I love that pick so much for Davey. He ran game number one. If you have a game one like that, you're feeling yourself. You just want to pick something that fights and gets aggressive. This on her is it. We have seen precious oh. little of on her recently, and I think that's an absolute crime, Judas. This on her is a little mana and hungry. That's probably his weakest point. But you know, you can make up for that. You've got things like Death's Toll, the Leather Cow, just some mana sustain in there. The Passive Brought Shred, CC Immunity, great damage. I love this look. I'm so happy. I'm I mean, we love the look of the end now. Well, the one thing I don't love the look of so much is the Jing Chen Karan combination now. Clearly, one of these gods will be going to the solo lane, but you will be going to the solo lane up against a Hades. And I'm, I, I, I don't really like the look for either one of those gods in that role. It's a Jing Chen jungle. No, it's not. This it Production, is that a Jing Chen jungle? So, yes. <laughs> we'll have to just assume that they will say no, Spooky, because obviously it's not. There's no way French Emperor goes for that. He did maybe Jean it's Kui. a Xing Chen mid. He did do Jean Kui, but that was after they won the first game, maybe feeling a little bit confident. This is the tech. This is not the tech. This is the thing you don't do when you lose game one. Uh, well, actually, no, I suppose this is the thing you do when you lose game one if you intend to lose game two. <laughs> But at least the Solar Scarabs have taken the Ares off the bot. I am a hater of that Jing Chen jungle. I think this might be a Jing Chen in the I'll solo lane. We've seen it before, but you could also put Karen there, I suppose. I think the Karen looks better in the solo lane than the Jing Chen does right now. Uh, just because the Jing Chen isn't going to find as much value against the Hades as he would against an on her. The, the Furious War reducing base attack damage, I think, is one of the biggest things for Jing Chen to go solo yep. with. Plus his, you know, natural HP regen is great. But if you're just going against the Hades, maybe you want him just for the CC immunity, but Charon does have his ult. He's got his dash as well. I think I like Charon better in the soul against this Hades than I do the Xin Tian. Oh, a Nemesis mid. That's crazy. It can't. No, it's not. There's a Baba Yaga. <laughs> I'm moving on from this draft. I, 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 I don't like what the Solar Scarabs have brought here, specifically no? because the Niflheim Wargs are basically picking from Feel the tip of the tree. We've got Set, Kamazots, Terra has been one of the most sought after supports up until this most recent patch. Uh, I'm not quite sure why she has fallen away, uh, but everything else from the Warg side looks great. But let's just see how it goes in action. We're going to head right on in to game number two and see how this battle shakes up. It looks to me like uh, the Solar Scabs are going for this slower style. They have put Xing Chan in the solo lane with Emilito piloting that Caron in the support role. Can you justify that one? I think I think Xin, Xin Chen is just like a better solo laner in general than Caron. Yeah. So if you're not particularly confident about a counter match, what is Preds doing side, here? That is the no, support lurking no behind. Way. No way! No you're way. kidding me! No Get way. the Luma! <laughs> Oh my god, he got the speed! No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Okay. Okay. Well, he's on the other team this time. <laughs> Prince Teleport! <laughs> what is happening? 
I just thought he got both of those buffs, and I was I was actually going to surrender the game on behalf of the Solar Scarabs. It is not that serious. It is just a small invade. Uh, whether he got any minions there, I don't know. Uh, it yeah, doesn't look like it. Given one. He's bottom of the net worth, so it, it can't have been worth it so far. And it looks like the green buff for the Niflheim Wargs is still standing, but... That is some craziness coming out from Preds. You talk about confidence from Davy. Preds has got it in spades. Yeah. Um, I don't like that play, personally. I don't like going Why to not, Spooky? and then immediately using it. Like, what, what do you do now? What, what do you do now? You're a level one Terra with teleport as your relic. I didn't like, think this far. <laughs> you can essentially ignore Preds in this lane for another level entirely. And just pretend he doesn't exist because he doesn't do anything. Oh wow, a stun! Oh, sure, I guess sure it would be nice if you had a root there, I guess. But you're level two, so you don't. <laughs> I, it's just, man, this is interesting. The reason I think Terra's fallen away a little bit is one, other sports getting buffed, and two, uh, their general irrelevancy before level three. Like, yeah, you've got a nice little heal, but early pressure is so important in this yeah. game right now. This shield buff is such a play point that not having a support that can really impact that a lot is a big deal. And you're seeing the difference maker already with how the Scarabs are fighting back into the wargs here. Yeah, some action brewing in this left-hand side. Looks like uh, the Solar Scarabs have only picked up the small minions from that shield camp. Uh, but in Preds and Davy now have a bit of pressure on their side. Might look to clean that one away. In fact, Rapio oh, making the rotation away. over. Never mind. Now Rapio just backs to base. Davy cleans that one up themselves. So oh. small bits here and there. French Emperor gets a cheeky invade on that first uh, Spirit Guardian uh, spawn uh, for the Niflheim Wargs. But everything is settled after that somewhat chaotic start. Um, from now on, I, I, I think I think we'll just have to keep an eye on how Preds ups to use this teleport because it's something we always see the the solo laners have. But I don't know. What, do you think a support can make good use of it as Preds goes for another green buff invade? <laughs> yeah, man, he's gonna be placing some deep wards and looking to teleport onto some invades. And... He gets the green buff. <laughs> um, oh my god! Like, can we ban <laughs> Preds? Like. <laughs> I think that's what the Solar Scarabs will be asking. There's, this, there's just no way to stop this guy doing... What, what, look at this! Look at... Achrom's had forced to drag it all the way look to town. I still don't know if he gets this. The Preds will not get yet another steal. We need an Invader's Curse permanently on Preds. I think that's the only way to stop this. Listen, I, if Preds is walking at your green buff 1v2... Just stop doing the green buff! Kill him! <laughs> Oh my god, is he going to get out? French Emperor oh, actually uses the ultimate there. Oh, wait, oh Purple Buff exposed. Oh, Preds. No way! Not only good at stealing the surrender, but comes out! Fully! All right. All right. Every buff on the map belongs to Preds. Uh, there is no reason for anyone else to try anything. Uh, because French Emperor also burned the first ultimate of the game there onto Preds and yep. still didn't secure it. Preds is still not level 5. It's actually the last level 5 in the game. Now, my Emily is still not quite there. Bit of a brawl on this left-hand side. Rapio's on the way over. Ekrom pushed into big danger. Gets the airstrike oh, nice. to come through. Davy no mana to chase. Rapio misses the slow. Nice jump from Ekrom, but diving deep. Oh, knocked up by the, the persistent hell. gust. There's a bat out of hell. Swoops once, swoops twice. Goes in for, with Preds and gets the, night, the last shot. But two kills instead go the way of the Solar Scarabs because the French Emperor is on the scene to clean up. Can't get the third kill. But overall, just the first blood for the wargs, but the Solar Scarabs come out on top. Two for one for the Solar Scarabs there. Not the best trade for the wargs, but I, mean, I don't think they really care with the way they're playing. They're playing pure aggression. Pedal to the metal. They are not slowing down at any point here, Judas. It's a good ultimate from Rapio. Good patience as well, waiting for that next bit of damage to come through so he can secure the kill onto E-Chrome. Unfortunately, not enough health in general to get back out after that. Now, Davey, under some pressure, but Preds does as Preds will. Forces some beads out, and Rapio is here once again. Arrow's looping around. I don't expect these two will meet in the jungle. They should just pass 
like ships in the night here. Maybe they actually get a, a green buff for themselves this time around. Here, <laughs> Whoa! Dude, that's, that's already big improvement. Reds is slacking, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we we saw this in it. game one, of course, you know, Fred's getting way aggressive, then takes the foot off the gas with just a bit of time to put some pressure somewhere else, and then I'm sure will return to oh, their the nefarious ways. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 it's on the top of right now, <laughs> 1v2. Rapio instead going out to French Emperor, has the backup of Gunter teleporting in. Oh Is this set slashing through, and that shall be Panvich cleaning up the kill on the left-hand side. I'm not quite sure what happened, but the, the uh, Pred story continues. I don't see a purple buff on Ekrom's shoulders. <laughs> Elito goes deep and doesn't get it. Oh David leaping God. in and gets the peel. I actually think Preds might have taken that away. I think um, he did. Yeah, it, uh, it's not visible on the map. Uh, nope, there it is. There it is. Yeah, there's the purple buff, oh Preds. Again, God. the absolute menace here. I, what, what do you even do at this point, right? You're Ekrom. You're trying to get your Devourer's Gauntlet online, and every time Don't you step you up to something... No way. He didn't. No, okay. okay. <laughs> and Leo sort of swims away on with the shield buff on that one. Ekrom just can't get these stacks online, man. Like, yes, he's got 27 of them, but every time he steps up to a buff, is being contested by Preds. Rapio's in his lane trying to put some pressure on him. This is not a great day for Ekrom. But I suppose it is a good Jing, Jing Wei game. Just because he has that little bit of extra safety. Try to avoid some of this aggression that's coming out. Does have a really good matchup into this on her as well. If he goes for the disperse, you just do your little flight away. And you're totally mm -hmm. fine there. It's probably part of the reason we see this Jing Wei get picked up into that matchup here. It's just a matter of it can't really duel as effectively with Davy in the early game. Now that he's got the gooseberries online, though, the clear from this Jingwei is actually pretty great at this point. Yeah. Like, if you got gooseberries, whose clear isn't great? But that's beside the point, Judas. <laughs> AoE basics with the gooseberries means very fast clear time, which means very easy stacks for the Devourer's Gauntlets. Once those are online, AC Ekrem start to get a little bit more active. Right side of the map, though, has some consistent fighting throughout it. Hanovich and Rapio have both been pretty active in getting some fights going on that side. Really, who hasn't been fighting? Who hasn't been fighting, <laughs> Judas? I, I mean, it's an EU game, and uh, yeah, really shining the uh, the light in the other direction. Now Preds might be in some danger, gets caught, gets knocked up. Ooh. He's now going to dash away, that gets caught by the summon here? sticks. Preds should be going down. Rapio sweeping in alongside oh Gunner, the French Emperor, eaten alive by this bat and set combination. Now Emilito will be able to row on out of danger. Rapio throws him back, but Preds causing so much of a distraction there you know training one for one for french emperor is always going to be worth it yeah he just takes so long to die still some aggression coming through here and leto dashing in out of mana is rapio that's going to be the end of the aggression from the scarabs here they're going to back off reset here man Prez is just allowed to do too much in this game judas like he had no reason to survive for as long as he did there but yeah. because he does it buys all the time in the world for rapio and gunter to rotate in find two quick kills get themselves on the board now game is tied up three to three here the gold lead though push in favor of the scarabs they've been doing a little bit better on the farming which is surprising with how much Preds has been invading seems like rapio yeah. has been a little bit more active on the on the fighting rather than the farming the Scarabs are able to take something of a lead here. I, I, I do wonder where that lead has exactly come from. We do see Zeros picking up a full Prophetic Cloak on that back. So it's likely wow, just this crazy. mid laner picking up uh, lots of, uh, you know, lo lo lots of farm from the mid lane, as we've seen, tends to be the theme at the moment. But everyone's uh, cooking up something good for us, apart from Rapio. No recipe on the side of this Kamazots. No, not even a party punch, not the triple party punch that we've seen last time, because, well, there's just one party punch missing. Is that going to affect Rapio at the moment? Still has the two kills early on, of course. It might be part of the reason why he's, you know, not clearing as quickly, but 
You know, if he didn't want to handle the heat, he got out of the kitchen. That's what they tell you to do, so. Oh, goodness, there's some heat. Ah, there is a <laughs> lot of heat coming through. Rapio, dangerously low, but he does still have the bat out of hell, so no real danger there just yet. Yo, Preds TP. And bitch. <laughs> um, I'm not, I'm not sure there's a whole lot here for this. The, the blue buffs have spawned, of course, but Preds oh, committing Preds the TP all the way over. Yeah, yeah, of course, Preds, you know, a little bit faster on that teleport, maybe. Uh, but, you know, trading, well, not even trading blue buffs, just securing your own blue buffs over here. Now, this this, this is the sort of EU style I'm looking for. Everyone just chill out for a second. Uh, <laughs> and we, need, we need to calm it down. Some bastions being poked down in mid. There's and no it's, way it's Preds is chill right now. <laughs> it's settling down a touch <laughs> in this stage of the game. But does that benefit either side, particularly, if this game does get to that later stretch? I do think the Scarabs have a better late game composition than the Wargs do. Now, the Wargs do have Gunter on this set, who plays very well in the late game. And Terra, always very effective. However, it's the other three I look at when I have to come back to them, because Zeros has some aggression put on. No, oh, they're good. Oh my gosh, fine. No, no. Yeah, he's okay. I oh, don't, don't, don't know what you're worrying about, Spooky. He's, he's okay. I like, that's part of why they're so good, right? They have such easy disengage. From what the works are trying to do right rapio can get active he can get in there but he has no cc he's got a slow from the vampire bats that single target it's not going to lock anyone down ecrum's going to be swinging for massive damage like he just did the later this game goes the more the composition from the scarabs really comes online their double guardian means they have a ton of frontline great cc great dive French Emperor on this Nemesis can shred people down in the later stages, and Preds maybe getting shredded down first. Forced off the beacon. Scarabs want this one. Brawl at the beacon. Gunter, though, not quite able to get involved yet. Ekrom actually making the rotation all the way over. This beacon has been more so in control of the Solar Scarab so far this game. It, it, it's, uh, I believe, they already picked up the first one. Looks like they're going to pick up the second one as well. Uh, which is surprising given the aggression coming out from the Wargs. But the gold lead now is quite significantly in favor of the Solar Scarabs, especially given that we're equal in kills. Scarabs are just playing the map a little bit better. We haven't seen any major objectives go down so far. It's really just the buff in base that we've been seeing. And I think part of the reason that that isn't paying dividends for the wards is because it's constantly just one person going for those invades. It's just Preds. It's only the support. So you're not really getting great secure out of it. It's a 50-50 every single time. More than that, the XP goes to one individual. It's not being spread across the team. Normally, if you're going for those camps, you can split it and get a little bit more effective gold and XP dis distribution there. Maybe. Has to burn the beads. And Preds. My just... God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm so tilted. I <laughs> I love watching Preds play, and I wish I could do this. And that's what's making me so mad. Uh, like, oh, hold on. Zeros might be mad in a second. Rapio going deep, even dives even deeper, goes up into the bed of hell, and shall rip that house all the way down. But now, finds himself under tower. Uh -oh. French Emperor gets the slow. Gunter Jeez. tanks the tower. French Emperor goes deep. It's a brawl between them and Gunter, but Gunter can't close oh, the missed. distance. Does not connect with the triple skewer. Oh. French Emperor might want to turn this one around. Gets the Age of Samuel out. Goes for another dash. There's a fantastic Ooh. shield to immune the skewer, but Gunter shall get out safely. Preds is here. They try to slow down the aggression, and the French Emperor shall run home. Overall, it's a one for one. Man, that, is, that might be a one-for-one one at the end. Preds, get out of the tower, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 1v1 on paper, right? But in in your heart, in the minds of every player involved, that is a that is a two-for-one. That is Gunter completely forced out by French Emperor on his own after he already killed Rapio. He, he basically just 2 v one them. Sure. Gunter gets bailed out. He's able to find the teleport to his sand clone. Run away. Never want to be the one running away. Like that's that's not a that's not a winning position. I didn't win that fight if I'm running away. <laughs> so now to kind of take a step back and reapproach things. And really, we we talked a little bit about how the words look scaling up into the late game. Oh my gosh. Well, not Gunter. quite this time is their late game tool right they want this yep. set online they want him to be swinging for damage if you're getting out traded already by french emperor 
it's not really super promising for your late game potential. The wargs need to start stepping things up a little bit here and find some real value because right now they're just being outmapped. It's not outplayed, it's not outskilled, it's just outmapped right now. The the passive lead that's been accruing for the scarabs is putting some pressure on the wargs. And I really feel like part of the problem is the lack of consistent lockdown from the wards. Yeah. They don't have a ton of CC. They're really relying on Preds to land something first, at which point they can start chaining what CC they do have together. Like, you can land a stun into a root, into a stun impale from Davy, but that's all contingent on that first CC landing. E-Chrome. Oh, man. Get out. Oh, my God, he's dead. Yeah, totally dead. That bat out of hell is just paying off massively for Rapio. It seems like the uh, Wargs composition is very good at getting people so low they have to retreat. And that's just perfect uh, perfect land for Rapio to walk into. Now, French Emperor having to brawl back. Of course, no bat out of hell, but Emperor with no leap on the wall. Oh, trading Maybe? places. Tag teaming there are oh, Davy oh, and my. Rapio. But French Emperor with the blink gets them perfectly placed. But look at the damage coming out from Davy. Needs one more shot. Will anyone be able to find it? Oh, Preds is Preds. on the way. Preds oh. locks him in perfectly. Fantastic shield though for French Emperor. Davy has to wait to get this final shot. Can't get the no impale. Way. And now... Might find himself cut off, but there is Gunter looping behind Zeros, who has to blast off away and shall use that home sweet home. Preds gets another green buff for their troubles and now finds himself retreating. I don't think the damage is here to kill Preds, but another explosive fight on left. Surprised we committed the home sweet home there. I mean, Zeros was oh. totally safe. And oh, E Chrome, wait, wait, he's out trading. Oh, it's a brawl back and forth. Davy starts it lower, leaping forward with oh. that disbursement. Gunter will seal the deal, and E Chrome shall fall for that. That's uh, unfortunate for E Chrome dying back to back there on respawn, but this does open up the Pyromancer for the Solar Scarabs. If Preds doesn't steal it, you know, that's. Gotta Don't be you watching dare. out for that. <laughs> <laughs> Soul Scarabs will confirm that one. Not a lot Prez can do about it. The Wargs answer back. Go Fear on the other side. They had two. That's two that can shred oh, down man. quick. Zeros. No Waltz. Last off mm. is good, though. Yeah, luckily, far zeros there. I think Rappi was not really in a position to dive with that bat out of hell because that might have been enough damage, but. Finally, a beacon looks to be going the way of the wargs. It looks like the Solar Scarabs cannot contend. But now with a, with a couple of kills that the wargs have picked up, they are not quite being as outmapped as previously. Preds actually not connecting with that stun just there. French Emperor standing on that verge, but Panvich diving all the way in. Amolito with the summon sticks to peel. Got to has to use the beads. The beacon does go the way of the wargs, and that will be that for the fighting. But everyone wants to get in on the action. Yeah, right now, I really feel like what the Scarabs need to do is put some attention over to E-Chrome and try to facilitate him a little bit. He's oh, just no, getting not again. aggressed on so much. Look at this. Impale misses. He's okay for now. But the sheer aggression on this left side of the map from the Wargs is telling. They know E-Chrome is a little bit behind Davy right now. They know he's squishy. They know they can follow him when he does go into the airstrike and try to put the distance down. Oh, Preds, don't. Oh, my God. Just help our boy out. <laughs> Someone needs to save no! him. Oh, how? What? How did the Preds kick? get that? Okay. Well, French Emperor diving deep anyway. Preds surely can't survive. Oh, fantastic wow. impale from Davy. Close lines the aggression. Another good wall to come in. There's the blink from French Emperor. Davy gets left alone and cannot escape. Preds somehow gets away with the crime, but their accomplice shall pay the price. Man, if I'm e -chrome... I am just slamming my fist on the desk after that one. He had one basic attack he needed to get that purple buff. And instead, he gets CC'd, knocked up as Jingwei, and he just has to sit there and watch his purple buff tick away and fall to Preds. One more for the Terra. And he doesn't even get the tower going! <laughs> Emelina is the one that takes down the Tier 1 tower. This is not <laughs> Ekrom's day over here on this Jingwei. But... With that said, it does still work out for the Scarabs. They do pick up the kill onto Davy. They punish the overaggression there. Despite a fantastic impale that pushed French Emperor away and kept Preds alive, they only do so much for so long there. Wargs have been biting back. 
It's a, it's a tug of war right now, Judas. Each side is vying for control of this map. And each time it starts to slip one way, there's another step taken forward, a pull back. The works have closed up the gold lead that was previously at 2,000. Now down to just 600 for the Scarabs. Well, ult trade over in the right lane won't impact too much here. So far, this game is going to fall to a little bit of a quiet state, I expect, until the next objectives do start to come up. Pyromancer and Fury fell at the same time. The next Fury being the Primal. I expect a little bit more attention paid towards that from both sides. It was, it's, we've seen uh, not a lot for all these solo laners so far. Panvich did make a big rotation to the mid lane for that beacon fight. But Deathwalker so far not been able to have much of an impact. Or maybe that's by design, but... French Emperor looping around. There is actually four-man rotation from the Solo Scarabs, and Deathwalker does decent damage on this Xing Chan. Now has had the freedom to farm up, and Preds Ooh. might be the first target, but there's another big rotation. Davies on the way, too. Summon Sticks only connecting with one, and now I think that might be the call to retreat from the Solo Scarabs, but the Sacrificial Lamb shall be the French Emperor, who Ooh. cannot escape from Rapio. Now, Amelito being chased by Davy, who's just firing shots into the back of this ferryman now. Dodging around the wall, there is Zeros having to run away from Gunter. Just the skewer just dishing out tons of damage. Preds TP back to the mid tier two to prevent the push from him. Ekrom, I do wonder if Ekrom knew that that wasn't a Hades and it was actually just Terra. No, nonetheless, paid off for the Niflheim Wargs. And now they're looking at this Pyromancer, but still also making eyes at Zeros and Emilito. It can only be the Terra. Pavage has blink and beats. <laughs> Prez is the only one with teleport. I bet he didn't the know. There's no way. That is crazy. I didn't even know that until you mentioned it. And sure enough, he's just only only one there. I don't doesn't get Ekro this. Ekro can solo this. Like he's taking no. way too much damage. No, definitely Ekro, not. Step the, the out. Step out. Yeah, you gotta step out. <laughs> Got to step out. And unfortunately, right now, Amelito has arrived. Will any of the walks respond? Gunter seems to be aware. Summon sticks is a bit of a flare being shot to the sky, but no, no one will rotate from the Niflheim Wargs. That will be a free Primal Fury for the Solar Scarabs. There comes the wave. <laughs> yeah, that, that's where it's ended up. About that it's it's majestic, war. right? It just <laughs> it's just sailing on slowly <laughs> through. But anyway, we are 22. Make that 23 minutes into this game. 61,000 gold to 61,000 gold. Six kills to seven. Dead even as we hit this late game stage. Spooky, call it now. Who's going to come out on top? You know, I, I still want to say the Scarabs, but we're going to have to see some better ults coming out from Emilito, I feel like. I mean, we've seen... What do you mean? We just uh, saw one. Yeah, we saw an ult. <laughs> We also saw one on the right side, which hit just Preds when there was the rest of the wargs and literally just the up, just turned the camera around and you hit more members of the wargs and you could just kill Preds while they're all feared by the wave. Unfortunately, that's not the way it goes down and the wargs were able to re-engage. Now they capture themselves another Stygian beacon. Do you, see, do you like to say Stygian or Stygian? But Stygian for sure. It's just It just I, rolls I just off the like tongue that. so much better. I don't know. It's you know. It's it, it makes the it most sense right. to me. It's, yeah, it's that's correct. that's that's the thing. That that's a big part of it for me. Uh, but the correct thing for the walks to do right now is walk on into this tier one tower. But Deathwalker now making an appearance in this mid lane fight. Said haven't seen too much from this Jing Chen yet. What impact can they have? The poke is fantastic from Zeros and Deathwalker contributing to that. Also, French Emperor lurking on the right hand side. The Wargs are aware that something is being set up. Finally, Panvich Panvich. spots out French Emperor, oh but god. oh my god, dashes in, and that is the go button from the Wargs diving down this mid lane. Already, Emilito very low has used the summon sticks. Deathwalker spinning, not picking up anyone, but Zeros picks up wow. one, trading back and forth on all sides. French Emperor shall retreat. Deathwalker getting dove on to. Now it's just zero. Zero's is low health, but Zero's does a wow. ton of damage. There's some low health no bots left to contend with. There's the Age of Samuel. Use do they have any cooldowns ready? Yes, they Ooh. shall. Gunter slams down, but Pred shall ruin any further aggression from Zero's. It is three for three, a triple kill for Zero's. Just I was looking at this fight. It's like, wow, this is just cooked for the Scarabs. This is where the Wargs make their comeback. Zero's with the biggest triple kill they could have possibly found there goes so hard in that fight and now because of that french emperor gets to step up to this titan take the wargs down 
push theirs up. They're not going to find a ton of value. Will be killed relatively quickly with Davian Preds there to stop it. What a turnaround from Zero. Sure, he falls. He didn't get the Penta, but I don't think he really could have asked for much more from Zeros in that fight. Yeah, could have asked a lot of from. cooldowns would have been so huge. The, the damage is just outstanding, and I think... I don't know if, if there was a bit more there from from uh, uh, zeros like that. That could have been the total turning point. But as it stands, we're still relatively equal here. I think the biggest turning point in that fight is the fact that Ekrom just doesn't have any survivability. Like he's on Jingwei, but he can't survive these fights. He's yeah. being just immediately jumped on and put down. And I don't know if it's the Charon or maybe Emilito's just looking at the front end of the fight and he's trying to protect other people. He kind of doesn't feel like he's gotten any help in this game so far. He's just getting jumped on in the back, burning everything he can to try to stay alive and dying regardless. And that really feels like it needs to change if the Scarabs want to come out of this with a victory. If they want to take this all the way, they've got to be able to do something different here and it starts with keeping this back line together ekrom has got damage he's got shred look how quickly the pyromancer falls in front of him if you put this on literally any member of the niflheim wards they're gonna feel the pain they're gonna fall down it's just a matter of actually getting to that point uh, it's, it's been tough so far for Ekron to get too involved, you know, as we've discussed, when you are playing this either. safe pick, it, nothing nothing there, uh, <laughs> but when, when, when uh, you are being dove so heavily, sometimes it's best as the ADC to just hit whatever's in front of you, but you also need to make sure you're in a bit of safety, and right now, whatever's in front of Ekron is what you need to be running away from, but Rapio, just the bad out of hell, this Camazots. So can't difficult to deal with. You know, you can't hit him while it's flying. Ekrom! Oh, Ekrom again! Just like we were discussing all the way back in their mid lane Phoenix. And still, Rapio and Guns are combined. Now they'll have to retreat. Was there, like, some, like, Twitter beef before this game? Like, did, <laughs> did, did Ekrom say something on Twitter to Rapio and Gunter that made them do this to him? This feels targeted. It's personal. Got it's some personal. posts traded out there. Rapio uses the bat out of hell to get away from the Sijin wave. Or the summon sticks, I suppose I should say. Hunter, looking for the oh! ring call. Doesn't get it off. Could be in trouble here. Uh, yeah, it. almost certainly in trouble. There's a root. Oh, there's an Aegis just Aegis? for fun, I suppose. Yeah, another damnation. Gunter, though, has some mobility. It's a big slow. Pops the Kingslayer for a little bit of movement speed. Can they get a bit further? Emilita will give chase another skewer Whoa. for the slow. The slow comes out from the slice and dice. Gunter with the beads. Rapio on the return. And Gunter no is out. Way. Burn a lot of time there for the solo scarabs. And still, it doesn't go their way. What? Let's look at what was just used, though, right? We got Kingslayer out of Gunter. Aegis and beads. This is a guy just who just wants die to at be... that point. <laughs> he wants to dive in. I get right in the thick of things and start swinging damage. This is an incredibly vulnerable set right now. The Scarabs have an opportunity to make a play for an objective where Gunter cannot safely engage and fill his role in the team right now. This could actually be a big opportunity for them. It's just a matter of actually using it. Still a very even game as we approach the ends of builds kind of across the board here. These relics start to matter more and more. The downtime on them is incredibly important. And some of oh. ISO actually coming out there as well, which is not one that we typically see here, Judas. Fred. Surprised, but. Fred's just does. going nuts. <laughs> does that even you know, work? <laughs> it, it, Sarah, it, like... works. it works. It's like they're, they're slow. slowed and rooted. <laughs> <laughs> but like, well, you also got the tick damage afterwards, though. That'll that'll apply the uh, slow. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, it's 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 something you know, something More spicy that Preds be going for. It ke it keeps them in range of Preds. That's really what it's all about. Preds can keep <laughs> walking at them, and so oh, can wow. Rapio. And, oh my god! 
Oh, Preds taking some zeros. damage, but not as much damage as zeros. Preds is low, but will retreat. Panvich drops that Pillar of Agony. There comes the summon sticks from Emilito, diving forward. Oh, the rest of the team, but some good crits coming out from Ekrom finally, but Gunter's just slamming through Ekrom, uh, Emilito, and that will be the Pyromancer palm actually used as well. Ekrom swoop down, French Emperor swoop down, full barreling forward. Now it is just Deathwalker alive. Niflheim walks. Are they going for the end, or are they going for the fire? Looks like they might be looking for the end. As surely can. They've got long respawn timers, a little bit low, but only Deathwalker here. He cannot defend the against site. all of these. Uh, Sijian Beacon is available. They might have to fall back for that. <laughs> Yo, might have to retreat, but they will instead <laughs> aggress forward for this Phoenix. Now, there is Deathwalker jumps on. Davy is their target, and Preds has taken a lot of damage actually out of this fight, but the mid lane Phoenix has fallen. Deathwalker Whoa! swings them into the, fe the fountain. Got to no beads to work with. <laughs> Shall fall down. Deathwalker brawling back. Half HP on this Xing Chan, but the Titan still relatively healthy and down. actually has managed to defend no this base. One versus five, and might even look for some more. I cannot believe the Wargs just get played like that. Losing Gunter to the fountain of all things just kills the shred potential on the Titan. Deathwalker, when you need him to come up big, he comes up big. First it was against the Scarabs, now it's on the Scarabs. Just cannot stop this solo laner, man. You gotta pay a little bit more care. Now with Gunter down for 15 more seconds and time to travel. Oh, Preds DP. Preds DP. <laughs> Preds DP, and that actually means Deathwalker's in danger, taking a lot of damage already. Preds dives deep, Rapio swiping through as no! well, and will get this Xing Chen down. Emilito gives chase zeros, though, left alone. French Emperor blink over the wall, will swipe down this bat. And now on the backside, Preds is half HP. The home sweet home putting out some more return damage. It is just the one for one Emilito, at the, the moment. Back? Emilito still giving chase. <laughs> uh, it's unrelenting in their aggression, as is French Emperor diving forward. Nice beads on the impale. Doesn't catch him, and Davy will go down. Emilito again dashing through, trying to lock down Panvich. Gets a good silence, and the damage now from Zeros is enough to put Panvich in the grave, but French Emperor almost falling in the process. Finally, the Solar Scabs come out on top in the fight. Gunter still lurking will be a reset for the order side scares finally come out on top it has to come out off of a 4v5 really start things off there i'm surprised the wardix kicked things off when they did instead of waiting just a little bit longer for gunter to be there where they could have taken a more even fight they really didn't have to rush anything they had a mid phoenix down they still have a mid phoenix down that means they've got so much pressure in that mid lane all they have to do is wait for one of the Scarabs to step out and deal with those fire minions. Instead, they try to force a fight, take a couple spills, again. and now this fire giant is enhanced, Judas, are looking to go the way of the Scarabs. Zero stepping all the way up with the home sweet home already. The fire giant is super duper low, and the level have walks! Stealing away Preds what? again! You've got to be kidding no me! Way. I'm going to check in the top left, and I'm expecting to see Preds. No, it was the skewer from Gunter, but Gunter will fall. It's a double kill for Ekrom now, being able to get involved on this Jingwei. That is the enhanced fire giant onto only two as Panvich has respawned after it. The wogs get the all-important objective. They're going to lose the tier two tower, probably going to lose this Phoenix as well they just have to be hoping they don't lose absolutely everything that will be the phoenix down that will be the retreat for the Aegis? solar scarabs but again the wogs stand somewhat tall and the solar scarabs doing everything they need to man you can see how afraid ekrom is for his life right here he, he did not need to age us there like <laughs> what, what what pressure was he under sure the wogs could have stepped forward but he's got his team right there it feels like there's no trust to keep to keep Ekrom alive right now. I believe it. So, Six deaths. You, you got to be making making sure you're safe. So you get a great fight. You lose the fire giant to Preds of all people. <laughs> Support. <laughs> but you're able to take down tier two and a phoenix. Would have gone faster. Could have gotten more with the EFG, but no, no secure there. I'm so salty about this, dude. This is so <laughs> mad. So, you still haven't evened things out, right? Your Phoenix has come back up. But, Primal Fear being looked up by the Wargs. 
right side Phoenix is down, and they're the ones with the fire giant. Uh -oh. oh my god, Rapio? Ooh, Rapio oh. having to take to the sky already. Panvich having to take to the underground. Deathwalker is here. Blink comes out from Panvich. Davy and Rapio on the left hand side retreating. Primal Fury has been started up by the Solar Scavs. Davy just firing shots, man. This, this, this Anho cannot be allowed to fire off shots like this. That is what Honor does. He's just so much damage coming out right now. Primal Fury now going the way of the Scarabs. That one doesn't get stolen away. Preds wasn't there for it. <laughs> Still, Deathwalker playing aggressive here, looking for Whirlwind. Uh oh. He speeds out, but the rest of the team is here. Oh, there comes a lot of damage. French Ever already takes down Davy and Panvich. Nowhere to go, no one to help. Gunter now on the retreat. Can we see another miraculous escape? Preds is meanwhile being chased down the mid lane. French Emperor shall sweep up Gunter. That is three members down. Rapio dishing out whatever damage they can. Has the support from Preds coming through, but you can't be aggressive in this sort of situation. Look at the right hand side of the map. It looks like the rest of the Solar Scarabs are looking to get aggressive. And Preds now no finally way. getting shut down. Has nothing to do with that fight. No and they're being stalled. Deathwalker wants to walk in. There's no minion wave for quite some time, but Ekrom has a lot Ekrom's of damage. Alive. Zeros gets the kill, but it doesn't matter because the Titan is half HP. No one is coming to save them. Rapio finally getting back to base, but not in time. Wow. The Niflheim wogs get caught sleeping and end up falling in this second game. Man, your juggler is 12 and 5. He just lost the game to a backdoor, man. That hurts. Ekrom. Finally survives a fight. Finally able to put some damage out. And it turns out the works were right. They did need to kill him at first every time. Because the one fight Ekrom survives is the fight that wins the Scarabs the game. Well, it was as simple as that. You know, they just, they took the fight that they needed and didn't need to go any further. Preds and Rapier were such a problem for the Solar Scarabs. But you can just ignore them, I guess. And you can just swoop around the backside and walk on through that exposed phoenix it was it was just a great call from the solar scarabs they did everything they needed to at exactly the right moments and he actually has a ton of damage for for being three and six he's out damaged davy that's a fantastic performance maybe not the best slash line in the world but hopefully they'll clean things up in game two and have a little bit more peel for the back line all right we are one for one in this set who will come out on top let's find out as we head to a quick break
sorry, my dear. You think you've learned your lesson? I guess I made a mistake. All right, everybody, let's go. Let's kick off game number three. We're going to head straight into Picks and Bands. Get this going nice and fast. Yes, Spooky, are you excited to see what the Wargs have to bring to us here? Because it's it's surprising that the Solar Scarabs were able to win that game in that nature, given the way that the Wargs were playing, still with so much confidence. Do you think they might take a bit of a step back? I was actually excited for your intro. I We had a very different one planned. <laughs> That we, that we just discussed. I'm a it wasn't much different right now. It was just pretty different. There's a few <laughs> key word differences there. But no, the Scarabs just got really one good fight. The Warriors weren't able to finish the game out. There were a couple of stumble points that I think are pretty easily identifiable. One, Zero's getting a triple kill in an otherwise completely one team fight from the Scarabs. And two, Wargs allowing Deathwalker to just throw their Titan Shred into a fountain and then backing off because what are they going to do now? So if the Wargs have just addressed uh, a couple of errors the there, clean things up a little bit, play a little bit more smoothly, and actually get on these backliners, because we saw some great dive going on. Ekrum couldn't play the game for the longest time. Um, it took one game for that, or one fight, to so fall apart. Scarab was able to win off of it. Love Dave going back to the honor. This Thor has been banned away. This entire set game. so far, Judas. Yep. This has to be going to French Emperor. I, I'm not even going to consider a solo lane Thor at this point. He loves this pick. It's been targeted away from him. This is a great look for them right now. Yeah, that's the benefit, of course, of drawing some bands away. So, for example, this Charon being banned out from Emelito and the Baba Yaga that Zeros has gone crazy on now in these two games. Understandable why that will be banned out. I know that's a god I haven't seen today. Raijin actually being picked up. Surprised to see it left for so long. Has that been getting banned? I don't, I don't even know. I, it's, it, it, it's been, yeah, it, it, it's been there. Like it's it's been up on the table, but no one opting to go for it. Do you think this will be a Raijin in the mid lane? Ooh, or will it be a solo lane Raijin to contend with this Chunga? I hate solo Raijin. I hate solo Raijin. Well, it's here and it's here to stay. I, I don't like it. I don't think it's that good. Obviously, I'm not an SPL player and I'm not an SCC player, so my opinion doesn't matter as much. I don't think it's as good as a traditional solo laner. Or that be Warrior, Guardian, or even something like the Chang'e or Zhang Kui. It's got good clear, it's got good damage, doesn't have great sustain, has some good utility. I just feel like he's better in the mid lane where he can rotate around. It's entirely possible that this does go to the solo lane. We've seen it too many times for me to say absolutely not. I just you prefer will not feel to. My corruption. Ooh. Oh, Fafnir coming through. That's a guard we have okay. not seen at all, I think, like the, this entire phase. It's been a very unpopular pickup. Not, not you know, obvious why that might have been chosen. Why, why would you go for the Fafnir in this spot, do you think? Usually you go for it because, like, Ares is banned, and he's not. Or you go for it because you have a ton of basic tax synergy, which... Oh, we don't. So, I don't Yo. know, Judas. I'm not really seeing the value of this Fafnir right now. It's got some gold spooling, 
but it's very single target lockdown oriented, which maybe the idea is to have this Thor go where the Vatnir is and just dunk on the same targets. No demon. It's safe. And now you're definitely really not base attack oriented at all. This Fafnir has actually lost value in the, in the draft in my eyes. That's crazy. I didn't think I didn't think that was gonna happen. I, I mean, Sean Kui, you know, it's got some basic attacks in there. You know, two of them. You know, it's like you know, if if you add a bit of attack speed to this Jean Kui, you might just find it works off. But I'll have to see exactly how it all does work out as we head on in to game number three. And uh, one god we didn't get the chance to touch on yet is actually uh, this uh, uh, Odin pickup. Now, I was considering, after we saw the top three come out from the Solo Scarabs, I would have liked to see maybe a Yamoja in support. But seeing Odin come through, Panvich playing this god, I think Odin is super strong right now, but we haven't been seeing too much of it. And why do you think that might be? I think he's just very easy to counterplay. And as the game goes on, he becomes an old bot, right? At the later points of the game, once everyone's reaching their late game even really in the mid game you're kind of just playing him for the ring of spears to come down and try to lock someone nope. down now it has a great matchup into death walker turns off the healing death walker has no way to get out of there without picking up a phantom shell but look at this early rotation from rapio you're looking at a level two gank onto death walker already here death walker has to smell this one out and yeah no sign of rapio know. in the mid lane Means that that will be that. And, uh, well, point goes to Deathwalker. Uh, smelled that one out. Gunter on this Raijin, able to 1v2 and actually hits level 3 early. So, uh, honestly, probably pretty beneficial for the Niflheim walks. Rapio still sticking around on this right-hand lane. They're really frightened about letting this Chunga have any space. He's really got some things to say about that one whirlwind of Rage and Steel from the last game. <laughs> he's, got, <laughs> he's got some aggression to take out in this early game. I... I don't hate him looking over there. I'm not the biggest fan of how much time he spent, but it shouldn't be the end of the world. He does Ooh. lose out on the mid camps on that right side. Should be able to still go for the left side camps, split those. He's a little bit behind French Emperor right now. And the biggest dr drawback of that is that that means that now Solar Scarabs have, or they're probably reaching their semi global ultimate before the wargs are, which means they won't be able to counter ult and counter gank based off of that. If Rapio continues to stay behind like this, could open up some really good opportunities for the Scarabs to just get active before Rapio has the ability to respond to it. I mean, look, he's still level two. He still hasn't hit three. It's uh, unusual for a Ratatasker to be such a slow starter, you know, this god is one of the fastest starting junglers in the game, especially by virtue of being able to upgrade that acorn while in the jungle. Gives you the ability to get a more, just more aggressive than anyone else. But speaking of aggression, Deathwalker having none of it because Panvich is all up in their business, uh, making sure that uh, Deathwalker on this chunga is not getting any sort of farm, but has already upgraded the tier 2 breastplate, of course. Uh, Emelito going very deep for this invade. Uh, I'm not sure they're, they're trying to play a bit of a panvich here. It does actually get um, th that gold camp. And I think, I don't know, man. It's just the year of supports doing whatever they want. Yeah. On the topic of uh, aggression, I think Preds is the one to look at here, who is now on this Kepri. Which, for those of you who haven't figured it out already in the first uh, three minutes of this game, is much less aggressive than <gasps> the picks that he's been taking. No way. Has nowhere near the same walk at potential as Terra and Ares. And in fact, we're seeing the effects of that where Emilito now is the one walking at these back camps. Their roles have swapped. And frankly, I'm not sure how much <laughs> I like that. That's a great pillar. Like, Prez's whole MO this entire set has been, I'm going to walk at you. I'm going to be in your back camps. I'm going to be a general nuisance. And what are you going to do about it? He's been punished maybe one time for it out of 70. So I, I don't understand the switch up and the decision to now go to this much more risky and passive pick who loses the shield buff. I'm just saying, if this was Terra or Ares, <laughs> he gets 100%. 
Yeah, it, it, it is a strange change-up. However, it does fit the composition quite well. Um, but, uh, oh, French Emperor duking it out with Rapio. Gets the worst end of it, though. Does not hit that Tectonic Rift and will have to mule his attunement away. Rapio pops the shard. Really wants to get aggressive, but shall not. And again, we saw a bit of a strange start from uh, the, the Niflheim Wall. So they're spicing up the, the you know beginning of the game a little bit. But despite that attempted gank by Rapio, it's still an even game at this stage. No kills either way. So I will again drop the question to you, Spooky. If this game does hit those later stages, does either side particularly benefit? I So I think the Wargs have... a advantage in the late game right and it's not because of their scaling although that is a factor here things like this odin ratoster they tend to drop off a little bit the later the game goes on we already talked about how panvich will be a walking alt bot the reason they have such an advantage is because that alt bot is so effective into the draft of the scarabs ultimates Coming through there, he <laughs> crouched, can't catch a break, man. <laughs> All the way back into the wall. But this ring of spears creates such a problem for the scarabs. Emlito has to have phantom shell because otherwise, zeros, echrome, and deathwalker are all just in hell as soon as that ring comes down. None of them have a way to get out. Two of them are incredibly reliant on healing to keep themselves in the middle of fights. Two of them are incredibly sh close range, given the nature of them being oh, Davey. mages. Oh my god, Davy! You know, a bit of a spot of trouble. Look on. No way. Rapio. Oh! The, the bait beat. comes through. French Emperor baited in, and Rapio cannot save the life of Davy. That's first blood. Trade it out. Far second blood. French Emperor does fall down instead. Uh, it was, uh, I, I mean, a good showing there from uh, Emilito on the Fafni. I think the stun coming at a perfect time to encourage French Emperor to go back in. Does lose the beads in the process, but I think you're still happy with how that goes. Yeah, it's a one for one trade. You kill Davy on this on her, which is already big for your Hachiban. It is a little bit unfortunate for them that Rapio is the one that gets the kill on this rat. He's been quiet so far in this game. Now he should have some opportunities to look for a little bit more aggression. Does have the ultimate coming up relatively quickly here. I want to see him maybe go over... Honestly, he can go anywhere he wants right now. Even this right side looks better than it normally would. I'm not usually a proponent of ganking solo lane just because it's so hard to kill them. You've got an Odin over there into a Chang'a. That's a squishy solo laner. I mean, man, just leave him, leave him alone, man. Like, come on. This is bonking him with like a squeaky hammer, but oh, that hammer's not squeaky at all as Rapio is finding out. Uh, it takes a big brunt of damage, but there's not a whole lot of action over here. I think that's what uh, you were just uh, alluding to, where Rapio can look at the solo lane uh, more so than you usually would, but French Emperor fully aware of that and actually defensive uh, with, with their rotation as well, just matching out where Rapio is. And Emilito becoming that nuisance that Preds has been, and Preds uh, not interested in uh, uh, the, the flattery of the imitation. We'll just walk away and ignore him. Uh, shield buff small camps again just go the way of Preds and Davy, but the big one will go the way of the Solar Scarabs, and we are in this slow down phase of farming which generally so far this set solar scabs have come out on top of and yet again we're seeing that reflected in the gold lead yeah where's my preds aggression man like if we're gonna do the eu things we need preds doing the na things <laughs> i'm Lido. the back here just looking for some cc i go drums do come out zeros is a target he was in a bit of trouble there. french emperor in the sky where shall they land? Rapio will dash E-Chrome on the rotation. Nice blink coming out from Rapio. Will keep them safe. And that's the end of that aggression. But E-Chrome with the slight rotation doesn't mind it so much. Though hand already cleared the wave. And again, bit of brawling over these small camps. But no one wanting to commit too heavily from either side. Maybe though, just now, Rapio goes in. Zeroes goes down. Nice double stun. And the purification beads come on out. Guys, just stop fighting. There's not a whole lot to fight over, oh but Rapio God. takes a ton of damage. Gets the Scarab's well, Blessing offended. leaping in his Panvich. There's the Ring of Spears. Still no one falls down. Finally, Gunda picks up French Emperor. Preds will be traded in response, though. It's a one-for-one. 
Man, all that, what was that, like three minutes of fighting <laughs> to finally get a one-for-one one trade definitely favors the wargs. They trade out Prez, who already got his ultimate off, for taking down French Emperor. That's a trade you're making any day of the week. Support for jungle is absolutely worthwhile. But it's a question of what can you get after it. Not a whole lot. The fight took so long. <laughs> there's really not any opportunity to go for anything there. Everyone walks away less than healthy. Still too early in this game to really look for any gold fury objective here. But what it does do is it gets Gunter a little bit further ahead now. He's 12 post zeros, level 11. There is some playroom for the wards. Expect them to slow things down, focus on their farm for now. We've got plenty of time. Everything looks standard so far from the builds as well. Nothing too surprising coming out on that one. Look of Toth on both mages. Zero is not going for any lifesteal just yet. Might go for some a little bit later on just to facilitate the Zhang Kui playstyle of I'm going to be in there and I'm going to be right in the middle of all the enemies. I hope I can survive long Reds. enough. Reds. Back to the usual Preds. He didn't even try! <laughs> oh, gets the, the beads? beads though. Just from an abduct French Emperor. Uh, aware that Rapio was nearby, and, uh, well, that's a big pickup, actually, for Preds. Doesn't get the buff, but maybe get something better. French Emperor is so scared, fully aware that something is happening, but not aware <laughs> so that Preds is right behind them. Mjolnir's attunement's already been used. We'll surely have to use the Anvil Dawn to get out. We'll just about stay alive for a moment. There goes one. Can the oh duck come down God. in time? Oh, no, no, it shall not. And Rapio's had to blink for safety. Dashing away is French Emperor. Coming into this fight is Gunter. We'll have to use the Thunder Crash out. Preds now getting aggressive onto Zeros. Rapio is still here. Preds is low health. Davies on the scene. Ekrom also wants to join in, but will Mounted Archery out. Finds a shot onto Gunter. Lots of low health. Oh my God. On a big rotation over. Zero's locked down. Wrap your low health. Can they survive? They don't have the scary Plus, Mule is attunement. Shall pick them off. Davy and Panvich still brawling it out. French Emperor here. Gunter oh finds God. all the chain lightning zapping down the enemy team. A triple kill in one fell swoop. Shall find the fourth as well. Will Panvich at four kills for the Wargs. There's the rising value for you there, Judas. Good God, the percussive storm just rips through so much damage. Tycho Drums did almost nothing to Zeros. He had to use his own ultimate, doubled his protections from his passive in that one. But the rest of the fight just goes so cleanly the way of the war. He's all off the back of Gunter there, pushing their lead up a little bit more now. 1,600, the first real lead we've had in this game so far. Rapio, I have to, I have to put a question mark on Rapio's death there. Like, he was retreating back to his team, Judas. He was retreating back to them. He's going the right way. And then he looked at them. He stared them in the eyes and said, Don't follow. <laughs> and he just dashed through a camp and got caught by a hammer. A little bit unfortunate. But the worst able to make up for it. Nothing too bad there. They're going to collect a beacon off the back as well. Now as we're approaching... The 15 minute mark pyromancer will be a conversation point relatively soon hopefully we'll make sure we see some objective play it's eu i wouldn't be too surprised to see them there at the spawn fury is staggered so they've got a little bit of room to play with here preds now going back to preds things just walking in the enemy jungle just being a big beetle <laughs> look at this not really taking any damage either. And actually gets the ultimate out from Zeros. French Emperor's on the left-hand side. I'm not sure if Rapio spotted it out, but still darted away in the nick of time. That's two ults traded for nothing from the Solar Scarab. So, you know, Nephilim walks with a bit of a window to see what they can do. It's just the Oracles for the time being. No Pyromancer available. But, uh, yeah, Solar Scarab's not quite connecting with their damage. But they don't need to because the lead is still not quite insurmountable just yet. Honestly, there's a, a window to make a couple plays here, but I'm not sure if the risk is really worth it, right? They're only 1,600 gold up, not the biggest lead. There's no objective on the map right now. So even if you do make a play and you find a kill, there's really nothing for the Scarabs to go for afterwards. Like, you can look at the buffs, but even Bitch. those are all down. Pavich uh, disagrees with me. 
Oh, Ikrom absolutely pinned wow. down and gets killed off already. Emelito with a long jump away, but there's some root. There's some good CC. Preds gets the abduct, oh and this God. will be a dragon that is slain. Gunter now diving so deep on the French Emperor, finding the Tycho drum shots. That's another three kills and a tower on the left-hand side. This left side of the map just belongs to the Wargs. I take it back. I take it back, Judas. If you're going to make a play like that and just find three easy kills, and a Do tower it. on top, for <laughs> sure. Absolutely worth it every single time. Might not extend like the actual gold lead all that much. It's still pretty close to being even. But it does get you some XP on the board. It does punish them for making those plays. Now 2,000 gold ahead oh on God. the wards. I don't, I don't know what Rapio's doing over here he's two levels down on death walker you're not you're not touching that boy he's got breastplate <laughs> and a warlock staff in the works uh ain't worth it at this point <laughs> Yeah, going for the long con there is Deathwalker. Has the Breastplate already finished up quickly to keep them safe, but the Book of Toth and Warlock Staff, we've seen this type of build before come out from Deathwalker, and it does take a lot of time to really come online. When it does, it's going to be powerful, but with the way that this left-hand side is going for the rest of the Solar Scabs, will Deathwalker have the time to really impact this map? Because it's, it, it's going to take... A monumental effort to not be so far behind that this Chunga is just irrelevant. It's like I always say, Judas, not my lane, not my problem. Now, it is definitely a timer for Deathwalker right now. He is level 15. He does have the Book of Toth fully stacked and Breastplate of Valor, so he can look to make some rotations. Now, is it worth it to do so at the cost of your staff stacks? I think so, yes. You can get stacks anywhere on the map. If you're getting kills by rotating, okay. Get some additional stacks there. I was wrong. He doesn't have the Book of Toth fully stacked. That's still working on it. Ooh, Ikram has to go up into the ultimate. Some mounted archery just for some safety there. Right now, the wargs really have all the pressure in the world. And so the question is, where can Deathwalker rotate to? Where can he go? Is there any place... He can rotate into and have a impact. At level 17, it's hard not to have an impact when you rotate. The question is, how much follow-up do you have? And right now, Scarabs don't have a ton of it. So I like this idea instead. Split the map. Let the wars take that fury. Go for the Pyromancer. But they disengage. They drop it. You see Panvich walking in and Gunter not far behind. Yeah, so frightened. Oh, oh the Scarabs. Bro. Oh, Ekrom caught again. No mounted archery to work with. Emilito trying to punish Rapio. We'll go into the transformation. Gets a slow, good stun from Rapio. Oh, jukes him out. Oh, Fantastic my... there. But in the mid lane instead, Anvil. Zeros has been blown up. French Emperor comes down, gets impaled into the wall, oh, and gets my. swarmed by the rest of the team. Gunter also revived in that fight. Rapio now re-engages onto Emilito. That's where you went, you little rat. And Emilito tries to burn him down. Down, but cannot do it another four kill swing for the walks they take yet another tower and they might even go big fire here i feel like i should tell death walker that i was joking when i said not my lane not my problem <laughs> it definitely still is your problem and he was he was there he does make the rotation over but by the time he gets there there's really not a lot he can do he's just kind of standing by the tower watching his team get decimated like huh do I have to do another 1v5 defense here? No, it does not. Let's that tier 1 drop. It's not game ending just yet. We're only 17 and a half minutes into this game. The Wargs are extending their lead. Close to 5,000 now. Still a little early for my liking to begin looking at Fire Giants. But they've got towers on board. They still have a tier 1 on that right side. They can easily walk over there. Break that down. They have a runic bomb to just shred it. Rapio feeds out. Mounted archery. Oh, oh, the car crashes in. <laughs> French Emperor dunks down, has to age us the shot. Oh, got a nice teleport there. The disperse comes out from Davy. French Emperor's in such a bad location, though. Will surely be falling. Oh, walks ah. right into Preds. Gets the Desert Fury out from Davy, at least. Finally, the Solar Scabs answer back with a pick, and it's on to Rapio, so it should be worthwhile. I don't know. I don't know if it is worth it. Like, yeah, they get a little. The kill, and they get an ultimate out from Davy. That's big. But they lose 
French Emperor as well. I mean, that's such a big part of your team to just not have on the board. At the end, it's, it's always usually worth it for the team that's behind to go one for one. And it is both junglers. It's just a shame the Scarabs can't really do anything off of it. The fact is, they trade out the kills, and they don't open up anything for themselves. They can't make any plays, so it's really just time that Emperor spends on the gray screen, not getting farm, not getting gold. And it makes it pretty neutral. Now the wargs, it was kind of ignore what happened. They'll be able to group up wherever they want to and take a look. Davy on the right side of the map, they want that tower. It's going to be going down relatively soon here. And after that falls, that's the last bastion, really, preventing the wargs from just walking over to a fire giant and starting it up whenever they want. Yeah, we're seeing Rapio actually farming on the left-hand side. And I guess that's why they've sent Davy over to the right-hand side, just to, you know, put some pressure onto Deathwalker, who now finds himself locked in a cage. Nice double stun. Preds is here as well. Do they have the damage? Yes, wow. they do. Gunter blowing up the last bits of HP for Deathwalker. Rapio again finds E-Chrome, does not get the stun. So we'll dash on away. But the last Bastion has fallen on this first defensive line for the Solar Scarabs. Maybe even some more on the way, too, because the rest of the Scarabs can't rotate to this right-hand side. French Emperor just trying to get their own speed buff. Right side tower will go down, too. It's still not looking good for the Scarabs. That works really looked at Deathwalker and said, Oh, yeah, those are some nice physical prods you've got there. Uh, where are your magical ones? Apparently nowhere, and Guntry takes full advantage. Opens up an easy two-tower push there. Things are just looking worse and worse for the Scarabs by the moment. The Wargs very effectively pushing their lead. Now, around the 8,000 mark. Only Fury on the board. Fire Giant on the board. But if I'm the Wargs right now, I'm not looking at Fire Giant. Sure, I've got a great lead. But I've got a, a significant enough lead that we can walk over to this Oni Fury, shred it incredibly quickly, and then after that's down, they can use those Oni minions to cement pressure in the lanes and get themselves an opportunity for the fire giant. Scarabs aren't at a point where they can just burn this down, because all it needs is Panvich here to slow them down on this. With two people on the left-hand side, the Scarabs have decided to go for the Hail Mary pull onto this fire giant. French Emperor's going up to the sky, Panvich, the fire giant's so low, but the wargs yep. steal it away from them. Ripped back, Gunter now on the scene. Rapio oh. in the sky, zeroes in the ground. And then Panvich leaping forward, chasing down Deathwalker. Ekrom has to retreat again on the mountain at Archie, but the chase down is so oh. good from Rapio, blows them up. Deathwalker now chased under their own Phoenix, but the dive continues on. Rapio finding more shots, gets a bit more damage, and gets triple. the triple kill for this Ratataska right side Phoenix. Phoenix falling down. Emilito nowhere to be seen because Davy is giving them the <laughs> chase down, locking them over on this right hand side. It's been so good for the Wargs. Man, that Phoenix takes so long to take down because Davy isn't there to shred it. He's just taking Emilito out of the picture. And nice look juke. at what it's opening <laughs> up for the Wargs. They get everything over there. They've got the tier two, they're taking a mid lane Phoenix as well. Wow. This has been disastrous for the Scarabs. And still, Emilito left <laughs> to just wander and survive. A another Duke on the Disperse can't lock him down. Finally, <laughs> Davey gets the kill, but I don't think that was beneficial for the Scarabs, who didn't even need to defend against Davey, because Davey, like, wasn't nowhere to be found. Still, two Phoenixes go. It's just so good for the Wargs now. They have full control of this map. Yeah, uh, Wargs. I'm going to go ahead and take down the Pyromancer as well. Davey just playing this game solo at this point here. Man, it's just so risky to go for that Fire Giant. There's a reason the Wargs went for the Oni Fury instead. And it's because they know they have the better secure. And the Scarabs don't have enough shred to take it down before they're able to respond. I understand why the Scarabs made the play. But when you see Panvich and you see Preds there... You have to make a decision there. And they did. It ended up being the wrong one. They stuck on the fire giant rather than dropping and trying to kill Panvich or just trying to disengage from it entirely. And I understand the thinking that, okay, if we leave now, the wargs will just come in and do it themselves. Well, the wargs end up doing it anyway, and you gave up three kills for it as well. It's 
better to just drop it, pull back, and look for the defense. If they had, they may not lose two Phoenix off that. But now a third one being looked at as the wards push down the last bastion of defense for the Scarabs. The tier two falls. All five wargs are here on this one now. The last throw of the dice for the solo scarabs. The titans have been unleashed in this left-hand side. Will the scarabs opt to use this titan to push out aggressively? Now the wargs are set up for it. They've got Rapio waiting in the wings in the jungle, actually out of ward vision. So the solo scarabs can't step up because they don't know where this Ratatasker is. Titan is falling Risky. relatively quickly. Amelito jumps in. Goes in deep, gets the Dragon Transformation. Deathwalker Death also blinking behind. Nice stun onto Gunter. Good damage, but it's not quite enough. There it shall be. Well, one's already fallen on the other side too. The Titan is helping in this fight. Pred's taking so much damage. Davy also low HP, but Rapio and Panvich are swinging through. French Emperor gets the beads. Can't find enough damage. Gets Davy down. Deathwalker and Panvich Rapio. still brawling it out. Rapio is still here, though. Does a ton of damage themselves. Deathwalker now nowhere to go. Rapio's on the rampage, Solar Scarabs get deicided. It is just a matter of time. There are minions waiting in the base of the Solar Scarabs, ready for this Titan to return, and it will return to a world of pain. This could just be game. Rapio is still up. Ekrom, eight seconds. Fire minions here. Oh, they're being distracted. Close. Though. It's gonna be close. Padvich. Oh, the Ring of Spears oh, is great all? to lock it what down. Oh, Ekrom can't fire the shots in. The Titan goes down for the Solar Scarab. The Niflheim Wargs, they take it long. They take it in three. And this will be a 2-1 victory for the Niflheim Wargs. Man, it was looking not like the worst fight in the world for the Scarabs there at the end. But the fact that they had two Phoenixes down and they took that fight, that was an all-in Hail Mary, all or nothing play. And it wasn't the worst fight, right? They were doing good work. French Emperor was able to take down Gunter at the start of that fight. Yep. And then he did find Davy. Unfortunately, Preds landed the Scarab's Blessing on Davy before he fell in that fight. Which means Davy got two lives to play with. Extra time being put towards killing Davy. Extra time Davy gets to put the damage out. The Panvich and Rapio had an easy time cleaning that one up. Sure, you allow the Titan to step out of bounds. Wasn't there for the fire minions to hit when, when you lost, when you died. But it sure was when you were still on the gray screen. Warg sent it right back, clean it up. Excellent ult from Panfish to make sure Ekrom couldn't do a thing in that fight to try to defend his Titan. Well, that was it for the Solar Scabs. The Niflheim Wargs take it to one. This has been the EU SCC. It's been myself, Judas Priestley, with Spooky Mars over here, and then Printers and Raptor in the background bringing you everything. That's it from us, but don't go anywhere. SPL's up next.